Hello all. A couple of years ago I did an overview video, a review of sorts, of the Mafel MT55cc plunge saw. It was to try and answer some of the questions about it really, one of which was, does it cut on the same line at 0 degrees and 45 degrees of bevel? It is sold as doing so, but I could only answer given my experience, to which the answer was no. Others I know with the saw have no issue with the cut line at 45 degrees, but mine missed the line by about 1mm. I meant to examine the options for a fix straight after the original video, but alas, it's taken this long to actually get round to it. But I have fixed it, and I'll share with you how in this video. So here I have a piece of 25mm MDF, in which you can see I did some experimental cuts, about 7mm deep at 0 degrees and 45. The cuts nearest the edge are as my saw was, where I mark with the blue pen are 0 degrees, the red pen at 45. Using the edge of the steel rule, you can see the issue. The 45 degree cut, where the red mark is, is clearly not on the same line as the 0 degree marked blue. As the 1mm packer shows, the offset is pretty much bang on 1mm. Disregarding my experimental cuts in the middle of the bunch, I'll mark the back row of cuts blue and red as before. Zooming into the rule edge, you can hopefully see I managed to get the cut line of 0 and 45 degrees bang on the same cut line. I did each of these test cuts twice to make sure it was right, and as you can see, the second cut line too is bang on. So given the offset was 1mm, I achieved this matching cut line by simply raising the guide rail by 1mm by having packers underneath. Using the rule to crudely demonstrate tilted something like 45 degrees, its end resting in one of the cut lines, you can see if I put a block up to the cut line lifting the rule, it makes the rule's end contact the board further back. This is the effect we're after. Obviously packers under the rail only demonstrate the fix, but what we need to do is fix the saw. Like a lot of plunge saws, the Mafel doesn't have a fixed pivot point like most circular saws, but as you can see here, the lower pivot glides in a housing. This is what is supposed to help with the bevel cut line position. Obviously in my case here, the whole mechanism needs lifting slightly to do its job properly. Thankfully this won't prove too difficult, as the whole saw body and tilt mechanism can be unscrewed from the base plate via four screws, two at each end of the saw. Again, thankfully, you can see here the screws come through little mounts on the base plate to fix to the pivot mechanism. Before whipping the base plate off, I'm putting together a jig using the same bit of MDF I used for the test cuts. This is needed as the holes for the screws in the base are oval to allow for alignment and adjustment of the blade to the base. It's bang on as is, so I want it to go back that way. I'll have the base going across the short length as I want to be able to access the fixing screws from below later, so the base needs to overhang the board at each end a little. I've got a scrap of ply to butt the side of the saw up to. It needs to be positioned far enough back on the jig to allow the saw blade to enter the MDF, leaving material either side, creating a trench. It's this trench and ply stop that will serve as a setting jig when we put the saw back together. Then with the saw butted to the stop, I can make a plunge cut 20mm into the material. Not moving the saw at all, it's just a housing for blade alignment. And here it is, simple little jig that should make reassembly straightforward. Time to unscrew the base then. Might as well give it a bit of brush and vacuum action while it's apart. So here you can see the four mounts for the bevel mechanism. To lift the mechanism by 1mm, I'm using these small M6 washers which happen to be exactly 1mm thick. I just place one on each mount. Poke the screws through, then carefully so I don't lose any screws or washers reattach the base to the saw body. It's important to leave the screws a little loose, with some play in the base, so when I put it on the jig, it can settle in place before fully cinching the screws down. Happy everything is properly in place, I do just that. You can see why the base needs to overhang the jig now. Oh, one important thing I nearly forgot is, as the fix raises the saw body slightly, on the Mafel, you may need to adjust the little grub screws in the base that ensure the blade descends a perfect 90 degrees to the base. Very few saws have this feature, but do double check with a square if you have the ability for adjustment before putting it to work. All done, I'm pretty happy with that. Time to give it a test and see if it worked. As before, I dropped the blade 7mm into the MDF at 0 degrees. 
Then move along a little and do the same at 45. I do this twice to, well, double check. As before, mark blue for 0 degrees and red for 45. Moving the rule to the cut lines looks pretty peachy. As a reminder then, here's the cut lines at 0 and 45 as my saw was, the 45 clearly off the cut line. Here you can see the cut lines after the fix. On the same line, I'm very happy with that, the fix clearly works. Now depending on your level of offset, you might need to hunt down half mil washers or 1.5 or whatever. But if you've an old out of warranty saw like mine, hopefully this helps you sort it. Like I said in my original video, if your saw doesn't cut right from the get go, get onto the dealer for an exchange or NMA tools, Maffel's UK importer. And not just for Maffel either, if you pay a premium for a saw, make sure they're supplying you one that does what it claims. If, like me, you don't make a fuss, the companies either won't know or won't have the sufficient impetus to correct the factory process. Admittedly, I didn't as I used the bevel cut so infrequently I wasn't too miffed about it, just using a 1mm packer to offset my rail from a line before a bevel cut. Now though, I won't have to, hopefully neither will you. Feel free to add a comment or question below, and as always, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching.